Welcome to No Longer Conformed, my online preaching and teaching ministry. We're studying the book of 1 Corinthians. I've entitled this study, Serve in Unity. In this session, we'll be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 to 13, handling questionable activities. There are times when believers struggle with the question of activities. Usually, it's in the area where God's word does not seem clear on the issue. In this session's text, Paul gave some principles to Christians to help with those kinds of situations. Christians in Corinth faced the issue of whether to eat meat sacrificed to idols in pagan temples. Greeks and Romans worshiped many gods. They believed evil spirits would seek to get into humans by attaching to the food before it was eaten. The spirits could only be removed by sacrificing the food to God. The sacrifice gained favor with the God and it cleansed the meat. Those type of offerings were common among pagan Gentiles, the unbelievers. One part of the meat was left on the altar. One part was kept by the pagan priests. And one part was often sold in the marketplace. Because it was sacrificed to idols, it was sold at a reduced price. Recognizing a good deal when they see it, Christians at Corinth wondered if it was okay to purchase the meat. Was it right to buy this stuff? Was it right to eat this stuff? Well, let's bring that forward and let's ask, what about questionable activities today? What is right? When the Bible does not seem to be clear, how can we know? Well, in our text for this session, Paul provided four principles for handling questionable activities. First of all, love is more important than knowledge. Look at uh, verses 1 through 3 of chapter 8. Now concerning things offered to idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. And if anyone thinks that he knows anything, he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, this one is known by him. Paul and other believers had the knowledge to know that meat sacrificed to idols had no special spiritual significance. That God did not even exist. So there was no contamination. But while knowledge in a particular area gives boldness to take part because it really would not hurt you, love prevents you from expressing that freedom so that other Christians are not offended. Love builds up in truth and wisdom. It proves you really know the Lord. And then second, Witness is more important than participation. Look at verse 4. Therefore, concerning the eating of things offered to idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there is no other God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there are many gods and many lords, <clears throat> yet for us there is one God, the Father, in whom are all things, and we for him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we live. Paul, Paul knew many weak believers would see other Corinthian Christians buying and eating the meat, and would think those Christians worship the idols. So abstaining from the meat would give a clear witness to the true God revealed in Christ. Here's the thinking. The idols were nothing. The meat was not defiled. Yet, there's only one God. 
the Father who is revealed in our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Our witness to him is much more important than the benefits of participating in any questionable activity. And then third, eternal things are more important than temporal. Look at verse 7. However, there is not in everyone that knowledge. For some, with consciousness of the idol, until now eat it as a thing offered to an idol. And their conscience, being weak, is defiled. But food does not commend us to God. For neither if we eat are we the better, nor if we do not eat are we the worse. Now, believers were sensitive to the questionable practice of eating meat sacrificed to idols. They saw the idols as real. New believers, they saw the idols as real and evil. Their conscience was defiled with guilt, corrupted spiritually because they're new Christians. And they're still looking at the old pagan lifestyle, pagan worship and idols. Just imagining believers doing it made them feel vital and violated. It did no harm to the body. In fact, the meat was a good thing to eat. But it was only for temporal fulfillment. The more important issue was what participation in the sacrificed food could do to the weaker Christians. How will exercising your freedom affect another Christian's walk with the Lord? What does that practice do to your witness for Christ? And then fourth, <clears throat> helping is more important than hurting. Verses 39 and 40. But, excuse me, verses 9 through 13. But beware lest somehow this liberty of yours becomes a stumbling block to those who are weak. For if anyone sees you who have the knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will not the conscience of him who is weak be emboldened to eat those things offered to idols? And because of your knowledge, shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died? But when you thus sin against the brethren, and wound their weak conscience, you sin against God, against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat again, lest I make my brother stumble. Paul did not want to be a stumbling block to anyone. Some believers would be caused to fall back into sin by getting involved with those foods. You do not think your freedom is affecting you, but it might tempt another into an area where he or she is not as strong as you. The word translated perish has the idea of being ruined or in sin. Look again at verse 11. And because of your knowledge, shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died? Be careful. Your freedom may be bringing you down as well. Look at verse 12. But when you thus sin against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Causing a brother or sister to stumble into sin is a sin itself against them and God. Paul would rather not participate in a questionable activity not taking the chance of putting a stumbling block in front of another believer. Eternal issues take precedence over the temporal. What do we do about questionable issues and activities we face in life? We use these four principles in deciding. Love, witness, selflessness, and the others. You spend some time thinking about that, and you have a great day.